Alright, well the Xenos have thrown down the gauntlet and we have to answer. Jupiter calls for aid. Let's go. HF-01 with the battleships Harrow, Electo, Desolation, Melbourne and Sydney, or Sydney B, are flying for Io, the Io Fortress. They will make it there in seven weeks at a maximum burn. Um, I'm actually going to spend the extra 130 Delta V to cut one and a half weeks off the trip. Off they go. Alright, so they're now committed. Five battleships worth of reinforcements, 3,000 combat power are on the way. Meanwhile, this, uh, this flotilla, Task Force Anzac, where are we going to send you? Well, what is our best base target, I think? I'm actually tempted by 4 Vesta. 4 Vesta, uh, we can't destroy the station which serves as the refueling point. So what we want is the alien station in the belt which produces the most mineral resources. There's a way we can do this. Inner system asteroids. And we want only ground bases. So this base here. Oh, it's not going to tell us. Damn it. Okay, I was hoping that that would help, but it doesn't. I'm after a nice, easy, relatively close target to try it out. Maybe Vesta is the best target. It's going to be Vesta or Oclo. You know what? We're going to attempt. We're going to attempt Oclo first. So SF Anzac transition. And we'll just do a click transfer here to demonstrate that you can do it this way rather than using the menu. You you can generally do it like this. So let's go pick Oclo. 4.2 weeks for a burn at 430 Delta V. Uh, seven extra days saves us a whole bunch of extra reserve Delta V in case we're intercepted. Commence burn. And then there's the question of what to do with the Australia Post. Well, the Australia Post is going to be a vital close-in defense aid. So it's bu uh, burning for the IO Fortress. It'll make it there in 15 hours. Then there's the question of what to do with Battle Fleet Jupiter. We have a whole bunch of incoming. Now, hitting things once they actually get to the orbit of Ganymede is one option, but they might uh, link up as soon as they get there. So the question is, what's involved in intercepting any of these on the way in? So we can intercept for 200 and something Delta V there, but that's dangerous if they then decide to run, but it lets us intercept at March. I think we come in and... Oh, some of these are arriving soon, aren't they? 30 March. This okay. These guys are arriving at the set on the 7th of March. We can intercept the day after they arrive, as soon as they hit orbit, basically. So let's launch that interception because we'll be able to make that interception before. Um, before any of the other ships arrive. So that's two destroyers that hopefully we can pinch off. Any, anything helps at this point. We're taking the botany with us just for a little bit of extra point defense, but we can always abandon it if we need the extra DV. Meanwhile, if I run the clock just a moment, our economy should refresh. People have said before they sometimes see me build a building and as a result, my uh, money and all that updates. There we are. It's because it only happens every tick, but if you build a building, it forces the update. What I'm now going to do is go through my council and quickly give them some augmentations. In particular, I think ferrocyte emitters for the extra control point cap is going to be very useful, plus anything that increases um, command, because that again is useful and handy. Uh, security is also a good option because protecting these councils at this point is getting more and more important. We're very reliant on their incredible stat lines. So I'm going to go through that now. Well, I feel like this is an appropriate a backdrop as any. The first Jovian base is founded. The King of Planets is overhead, promising to dominate our skies now and always. 1k science and 200 influence isn't huge at this stage of the game, but it is a point of pride. Meanwhile, the battles are raging in Turkey on planet Earth. But I feel like much more important is what's going to be happening in the skies above. Fantastic, those HAB modules are completing. Now I'm considering doing independent commands or getting the, which is a minus 15% mission control cost for my starships. Um, I'm also doing a damage reduction technology at the moment. So improved plasma, improved heavy plasma batteries is probably the go. 
uh, as these will be used on defensive stations. So that gets a priority too, and we continue. At the very least, IO Fortress stations, battle stations themselves are online, which means we really should rush out those heavy plasma battery Mark IIs. We might need them. Uh, 9th of, 19th of March is probably good enough, considering we'll be distracting them for at least a little while around Ganymede. This station's defences may become the linchpin of our campaign in the Jovian system. It's a base to which our fleet can return, refuel, and then sally again, always hitting the weakest enemy targets, looking for targets of opportunity, and hiding from enemy retribution. Hopefully, the station endures. Now, a Dreadnought has arrived to bombard our system, unfortunately, that we weren't able to intercept, and we're still two days from intercepting Victor 52, at which point we'll be able to fire on that Dreadnought, but by then it may be too late for our Ganymede base. Unfortunate. I guess in the end it was not the uh, it was not the aliens that ended up getting trolled. Either way, we are burning in. We are about to make the intercept. Let's go. All right, target is rushing Ex Exodus and Autumn Dawn. The enemy only has 129 KPS in the bank, which means our bid won't actually cost us that much as long as there's more than them. Prepare for battle. Let's make 70 ships 68. And I will fight this one quickly because at this stage, there's no real room for error. Um, I think a head-on approach is going to be perfectly fine in this case. It's just a case of I'm not wanting to auto-resolve to punish me unduly. Any damage is going to slow us down. It's going to be time needed to be spent repairing rather than doing the job, which is eliminating these ships as fast as they arrive. So let's go head-on. Mag cannons fire. PD should be more than enough as long as we keep the ships lined up with each other. So let's burn the, uh, let's burn the botany in close up. She does have a nose mag rail that might help. Battleships aren't quite keeping up with each other. Let's go priority target rushing Exodus. And let's go nose on, gentlemen. Very good. Priority target Autumn Dawn. Looks like Botany was getting a little bit hot from all of her engagement activity, but she did okay. So we fired some ammo, but as you can see, we still got an awful lot of ammo in the battery. 2,137 rounds left, no damage taken, 6.5 exotics in the bank. Two hours, and then we can redeploy. I'm hoping now, if we look at the Jovian system, there should now be two fleets in orbit. That's right, Victor 157 and us. They've docked at the station, which unfortunately means they're safe. But in two hours, we can make an action against one of the incoming alien fleets. I'm thinking Victor 63 might be a good candidate. So may Victor 25, although it is only one destroyer. It depends on the intercept windows. I'm going to take it forward two hours, and we're going to pick the next one that we pick off. We've got a lot of fuel in the tank. Picking off these three would be a more significant victory. Three vessels, 946 combat power. If we can only intercept one or two, like if we can only intercept a fraction of these before they make it to the station and rendezvous, we should go for the larger groups. So Victor 63, I think, is the logical deployment. Three more ships, 900 and something, 775 combat power now, with 387.2 KPS in the bank. What have we got? Missiles and rails, missiles and rails and a point defense, missiles and rails and a point defense. We can take this. The enemy is attempting to run, so we're going to have to bid most of our remaining fuel away. Both fleets send spend 387.2 KPS. That's their entire reserve. Okay, I don't think they've got any DV left. So let's adopt our um, sideways path then. We're going to bring the botany all the way across and then have it sitting... What I'll do is I'll reorient botany like this, curve it round, and have it in the middle of the formation. That should make the maximum use of the available PD. 
We won't priority target anyone immediately. But I expect if they run out of DV, then um, charting their courses and hitting them with mags is going to be relatively simple. Let's decelerate you, but rotate like that. I think we're going to priority target probably Silver Mountain. Face like that, and we might have to angle a little bit down in this case. Let's also rotate the Hades. Angle her down just a bit. We'll padlock in a moment. Slow down a bit. Okay, at this point, I think we're going to padlock Eternal Harmony. Ships are in relatively close formation. Should be able to engage the incoming missile volleys just fine. Mag rail's going out. We'll see if we get any hits. I'm not sure how much manoeuvring they've got left if they spent all their KPS pre-battle. Their PD is mostly doing the job. But I'm hoping eventually we get phaser hits. Looks like we've almost cracked the Eternal Harmony. Alright. Silver Mountain is nice and close. I'm going to deconnect padlocking at this point. Because I want us to get into a pursuit formation. And be able to engage both ships because I don't want them to be able to run. So let's hook around. Luckily, our little PD boat, which is only there originally as a science ship, is the most maneuverable by far, obviously. Phaser hits on Austral Wind. How dare they use that name. Phaser's engaging. Let's keep burning round and go into a pursuit if we want. However, I suspect that if he spent if he spent all of his fuel, then he's not going to be able to sustain any sort of pursuit. I love those nose mounted phases. I really want to get I want to try out some of the four slot nose mounted weapons, the four slot uh, four slot spinal cannon. Um, maybe a four slot plasma and definitely I want to I know it's expensive, but the four slot, um, ultraviolet phaser. I really want to see what sort of range and damaging power that has on it. So, mission complete. Destroyed, destroyed, destroyed. Eight exotics in the bank and three more vessels scratched. So, we've destroyed five so far. Battlefleet Jupiter is down to 236 reserve KPS, which means it's probably time for a refuel. Uh, in four hours' time, I'll be able to dispatch it back to Battlefleet, the fortress station, refuel. A few more will arrive in that time, unfortunately, but we will see who else we can intercept on the way in. Uh, Victor 35 isn't due until the 12th, so we might be able to intercept. More likely, we get either Victor 48 or Victor 42, which are a little further off. Victor 48's a tougher fight, but they look like... If it's only got 671 combat power on four ships, it means they probably have fewer exotic modules. These are probably more basic bit ships. Victor 42, similarly nothing particularly scary. I am annoyed that a Dreadnought made it through, but if we can pick off, for example, another destroyer, two gunships, and a Corvette, that would at least help... that would at least help things. Battlefleet Jupiter is doing heroic work so far. Let's hope they can keep it up. Looks like one ship that flew in has not made it to the station in time, so if I'm willing to sacrifice three hours plus engagement time, I can hit it before I go to refuel. It only has a little bit of fuel in the tank. So let's attempt an intercept on Victor 25. Every ship counts at this point. All right, let's clean this up. Again, our opponent has spent basically all their Delta V, but we don't want to spend any of ours. 
because we need what we need in order to fly back to our base as quickly as possible. So we're going in at the drift, basically. Uh, no fancy maneuvering, because he can't do any fancy maneuvering. Just basically kill the target and try not to die. And if he's dumb enough to get close enough, which I think he will be, some of our mags will get through, or more likely... Well, okay, the mags did get through. I was going to say, or more likely, once it gets too close, the phases will burn right through his armor. Alright, I'm happy. That was an opportunistic kill. Hope you're all keeping count at home. Chalk up another one. Now, let's go get some bloody fuel, because we are low. Um, I believe... The fleet is down to 37 KPS. Those are some rookie numbers. So, in a few hours, I will be able to send these guys back to refuel. Okay. They're going for IO, the IO Fortress, and they'll be able to pick up their new recruit at this point. Uh, spending 17.8 Delta V will get them there in two days. A little bit slower than they'd normally do, but they got a ship for their trouble. Transfer to IO, 11 March. Let's hope that the crews have done some Formula 1 pit stop training and know how to refuel hundreds of tons of hydrogen in, you know, preferably minutes. Meanwhile, in between the massive alien uh, battle fleet campaign in the Jovian system, I just want to remind you that Humanity First are good people, and we have set up a Department of Veterans Affairs Orbital Hospital in order to care for all these people at our geriatrics facilities. If you fight for Humanity First, unify nations and kill aliens, well, you can look forward to the best in orbital, aged, and health care. Good stuff. I was actually joking. Um, I was actually joking about the pit stop, but doing this in 0.3 days and loading 271.7 water, uh, which I think is like, yeah, that's, that's actually an impressive feat considering they're doing in-space refueling. Um, these guys have some serious uh, lessons to give unwrap crews in real life. If they can uh, reload these sort of spacecraft that quickly and do it safely. Impressive. Now at this stage, making an interceptor Victor 48 seems like the right deal. They're due to arrive 16 March, it's 14 March now. We can make the intercept basically as soon as they arrive before they link up with anyone else. I think that's the right go. A destroyer, a gunship, corvette, corvette, gunship. Do I need the additional PD provided by... Let's just check. I don't want the armies, I turn them back on for a reason, but I don't need them right now. Let's merge the fleet with the Australia Post so they can take it with them. Battlefleet Jupiter is just that little bit stronger as a result. Yes, I know I'm basically dragooning science ships into supporting my fleet, but right now I need every PD, PD phaser I can get. And the Australia Post mounts more PD than a battleship. That's all it mounts, but that it does have it. Okay, so we can make the intercept. Let's transfer. Hopefully we'll catch them before it links up with any other fleet. A couple have started to congregate around Ganymede, but we're picking off as many as we can. A Dreadnought and I think one other force got through. But generally, Battlefleet Jupiter is doing its job. If we can prevent a death ball forming, at least until Battlefleet Terra gets here, then we're in good shape. Luckily, a lot of the really dangerous stuff, the battleships and the battle cruisers, that's not getting here for a while. And as you can see, HF-01, this is not the sort of orbital transfer you do with the sort of rocket technology we have available to us in 2022. This is telling the, as I saw in one comment, uh, this is telling the helmsman to point the nose at the place you want to go and burn. That's basically what we're doing. Maximum KPS expenditure, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Delta V gone in exchange for getting there as soon as possible. Helps on the way. Back on Earth, fighting continues, with Turkey being absorbed into the European Union. This doesn't exactly do good things for our inequality or GDP per capita, but my plan is basically to fix all of these countries once they're stitched together, although we are doing some welfare in the meantime. Uh, we're doing our best. It's going to take a little bit of effort, if nothing else because the EU's got all these armies that are sort of weighing it down in terms of upkeep. Uh, we will ship as many as we can to their home regions to at least reduce the upkeep somewhat, but there's only so much we can do. Once the whole thing is joined together, we should be in a better position. 
18 March. Okay, so while space is the primary theater of battle at the moment, our jobs on our, well, our plans on Earth continue apace. Max has got an alien to kill next turn, but we also want to break into Ireland soon because that's one of the last bits we need to absorb into the EU before we can continue. If we don't get Denmark in time, that's okay. This can be absorbed. Well, I keep calling this Denmark. That's not Denmark. It's just what's left of it, and it's controlled by the initiative. Um, absorbing that into the United States is an option if we are indeed on the clock, and there's only so fast that we can absorb nations, go to war, set policy, etc. The focus is in space. Battlefleet Jupiter, only a couple of hours out from intercept now. Burning into target. Going to give them a warm welcome. All right, Tally, Victor, 48, Swift Justice, Lone Protector, Sustaining River, and Eternal Memory. Okay, we've got some laser cannons. Interesting. 250 centimeter orange laser cannons, and then the usual mixture of mag cannons and missile bays with some point defense on the Swift Justice. But all these gunships do, these gunships are pretty heavy too. 14,000 tons wet mass. They're quite impressive little ships, um, but they've got violet laser cannons. This means we've got to be careful turning our side onto the target, at least at close range. We can still arrange for a path off to the side. They really didn't want to fight. They bit all their DV. Um, what is up with my formation? Apparently the Australia Post really wants to be in front. That is not something I would have advised. So we're going to build up a whole bunch of velocity, but point it off in that direction. And the Aussie Post, which does have some rear armor, is just going to turn around for the moment and sort of equalize itself like this. They shouldn't be doing much damage at extreme range, and the Oz Post does have a little bit of tail armor if they do try and fire at long range. What I want to do is form up a nice clean formation, and then probably, if they keep swinging this way, probably cut inside them, swing to, the, swing to our port. No, they're splitting us. Okay, interesting. We're going to do some hard maneuvers starboard and then what we're going to do is sort of come around so we're going to we're going to do some tokyo drift action okay we're now engaging primary target is lonely protector What got hit? Bloody hell, okay. Looks like a side hit, laser weapon, um, to our side, oh, of course. Um, there was basically no armor on the bloody science boat. But you know, casualties of war. The Australia Post is here to help, which will help. We're only gonna be able to padlock briefly. I'm going too quickly. Where's the other gunship? Okay, so the gun other gunship is actually way f is far, far, far away from us. So we'll engage the sustaining river. We'll clean these up and then we'll worry about the gunship. But that laser cannon just sniped me. Target engaged. New priority target, Swift Justice. We're coming off padlock because we need to do some serious velocity adjustments. The post needs to significantly adjust in order to re-engage. The I'm aware that the gunship is well sort of above our uh, well above us in the vertical right now. He's going into a bit of a vertical fight, but I do want to finish this guy off first. Even though he's engaging us at very long range with his laser array. Scourge is taking more hits to the side armor, but the side armor should hold at this distance. Okay. That simplifies our problems. I am still annoyed about that ship I lost, but, you know, 
taking taking what was essentially a civilian ship with very limited armor into this fight was always going to be a problem. Um, I do have more ships in construction in the Jovian shipyards. I've got a rush build emergency monitor with a whole bunch of PD. Mostly because those monitors could be finished well before new battleships could. So they'll do the job and they actually have armor. But I say, I think hopefully we can agree that the civilian ships, the civilian scientific ships, are doing their fair share of work so far. Okay, it looks like eternal memory is going to readdress us down low. I'm going to keep the attitude right. In fact, if anything, I can get quite aggressive in repointing at this stage. And then I want a left pivot, port pivot, down angle. This battleship is the one that's lo I've sort of let go a little bit. Let's fix this. But hopefully we score enough hits early on that it doesn't matter. Looks like this may become a pursuit. I'm not going to have to worry about the Australia Post anymore because it's a PD, it's a PD boat only, and we're not going to be doing any PD anymore. Let's put it that way. So instead, what we need to start doing is building up velocity to potentially catch this guy. Well, this is about to be fun. Yep. Give me a bit. This is going to be a long chase. All right, we have an unexpected hero. I forgot something. The Australia Post doesn't mount just point defense. It mounts one 60 centimeter ultraviolet laser battery, which I don't think is disabled. No, it's still active. So it's engaging the eternal memory as well as our major ships. Good old Australia Post. Target destroyed. All right, so that was a pretty expensive fight in terms of Delta V, both in terms of the intercept, uh, running it down, and then having to do those maneuvers. But I think we are okay. The Botany, unfortunately, our scientific scanner ship is being destroyed. Ozpost, Hades, and Scourge are damaged. Um, the fleet could use a repair pretty badly, and it could use a refuel, but scratch for more targets. Question is, do we hang around to attempt to engage either... Victor 56 or Victor 11. They're both awaiting, they're both arriving on the 30th. So if I engage one, I'll see what the engagement windows are. It's possible that I have time to go back to IO, repair, refuel, and then intercept one or even both of these incoming fleets. Of these, I'm very interested in taking out Victor 56. A dreadnought with a whole bunch of escorts is dangerous. A dreadnought by itself is easy meat. So I think as much as destroying three frigates with light mag can... Oh, these guys have plasma batteries. Interesting. We won't be able to block these with our PD, which has been our primary strategy. Uh, deploying plasma is a natural counter, and the aliens do eventually counter build. Whereas this thing is a spinal mag cannon. So this thing hits really, really hard, but our existing tactics will work reasonably well against it. It's got the small laser batteries that double up with its point defense. Uh, so we're going to have to put a lot of fire into it. In the end of the day, though, our phases can probably do the job if all else fails. Whew, okay, we're doing we're doing well. We're doing well. Battlefleet Jupiter will rally, and I think we're going to repair and refuel and then fly out again. March 16. We've only been playing for a couple of weeks. All right, I've realized we have a problem. The Oz Post is still mobile, but it's lost most of its acceleration. So we're actually not going to scuttle. We're going to split the fleet. Uh, so the Australia Post is separate. The Oz Post can limp, limp back to IO Fortress in 4.28 weeks, which is still pretty respectable for most ships, but it's basically down to the thrust of an ion engine um, in order to get there and repair in 4.28 weeks. That means Battlefleet Jupiter basically has just itself and its wits to decide whether or not it makes another interception. We could make it back to the IO Fortress in two days. That's probably the right move. But if we wanted to, 
we can have a look at one of these incoming Xenos fleets. And I just want to check the intercept window and their incoming Delta V budgets. Victor 157. Okay, they can't intercept Victor 157. And for these guys, they're looking at burning the majority. Oh, I clicked on the wrong one. We could intercept. We could intercept Victor 36 on the 25th of March before it arrives. Late on the day on the 25th of March in exchange for 142 KPS. 142 KPS. We can then outbid it at four. We only need to bid 400 because they can't abandon the Dreadnought, make it back to IO. I think this is the way to go, attacking this Dreadnought. The alternative, of course. Okay, they're all May arrivals. I'm not worried about them. Again, May and June arrivals, not as worried. And Victor 157 is actually burning away. Interesting. Why is it burning away? Does it not want to get intercepted? This is a really powerful ship. This is a full tech dreadnought. I think. I think we spend the Delta V and we intercept Victor 56 in the middle of its course, its, its trajectory essentially. And then we burn back to Io. I think that's what we do. 26 March, engage burn. Hades and Scourge will have to take on a Dreadnought and a Destroyer by themselves, but honestly, I think they can do it. Uh, if we destroy the Destroyer first, PD should be able to handle the rest. And uh, not having the extra guns from the Oz post or the Botany is gonna hurt, but I think we can pull it off. And I'd like to take down a Dreadnought. Back on Earth, our good friends Victor 80 are here again. Let's see if they take the bait this time. I'm not seeing a targeting message for them yet. Okay, they have picked a distraction station. Burn harder, Xeno Scum will soon be getting a visit from Victor 80. Let's hope that collectively these stations do their job as always. If it's cheesy and it works, that's right. Continue the runaround, Victor 80. They're gonna go destroy some super valuable human property, which is totally not an automated platform with some solar panels stuck on the outside. These are the superior Xenos invaders, everyone. And the relay race continues. Oh, fantastic. Um, so this was another Australia Post class that was in construction anyway before the war began. So we're going to have two Oz Post class monitors available to assist Battlefleet Jupiter, provided they survive their upcoming interception. They got a date with Destiny, and I hope we see them both again. All right, here we go: two human battle cruisers up against an alien dreadnought and an alien destroyer. In terms of total tonnage we've got the weight on them. In terms of total firepower, it's about even, but we're better configured than they are. We've got PD against their, uh, their weapon systems that are primarily vulnerable to it. Uh, they've got an okay PD defense array, but what they don't have is the phasers to back it up. The 480 centimeter UV phaser cannons are probably better than the laser weapons they have. So if we handle this correctly, I'm confident we'll get them. That said, they don't make us burn down their KPS. They're confident they can take us. So let's engage. <sighs> let's get ourselves a Dreadnought. So what I think, I think we're gonna break left to avoid the merge. And what we're gonna try and do is just draw out the engagement as before, and then reorient towards the end so that we're facing towards our opponent. The reason I want to have a little bit of um, backward velocity is because the enemy is mostly dependent on their missile and mag rail armament, and I want a little more time for PD to engage before we turn and commit to the major battle. So having some lateral motion or some rearward motion should help. 
Looks like they're going to pass sort of broadside of us, so let's rotate towards them. Primary target, the Roaring Sky. Come on, turn. That's right. Oops, I'll slow things down. You can see the PD really has to work for the larger mag rails. But I'm kind of happy with this. If we can manage to hit the Roaring Sky with our mag rails, or coils rather, which we're currently failing to do, and take her out of the fight, I'm more comfortable engaging that Dreadnought. As usual, the phaser arrays look like they're going to be decisive. So I like the Sydney class, and I like combining the coils and the phasers. But you have to admit, the nose-mounted phasers tend to do a lot of work. Now that we're in this situation, I feel more comfortable swinging around and actually engaging the main threat. It's going to take a while to adjust our velocity. I'm really looking forward to the next generation of engines when I have more combat acceleration. Right now, I'm sort of limited. It takes a while for these ships to change direction. We've got a lot of fuel in the tank, but it does take us a while to change direction. That said, I think we're bringing it together. What I do want to do is reduce the distance between our two ships, though. I feel like I've burned out a little too far with the Scourge. So what I can do is adjust like this. And hopefully we're enough to engage and destroy. Hades is taking some damage, so what we're going to do is we're going to pad. And that'll protect somewhat from the incoming. Alright. Better. Turn around, re-engage. Hades can afford to now unpadlock because we're now in pursuit. We're behind it. Its primary gun is forward facing. Its missile batteries look like they're mostly expended. So I think Shadow Dancer is going down. So Hades did take some hits. No internal component damage, I don't think. Just a, looks like just a little bit of damage to the tail armor integrity. So a little bit, a little bit of damage, but nothing actually significant to the operation of the vessel itself. So I would call that a win. Hades and Scourge chalk up two, including a capital kill. 5.1 exotics in hand. All right, that leaves us in an interesting position. So HF-01 is arriving next month. Battlefleet Jupiter is trans is currently, oh, sorry, it's, it's inherited the incoming wake. So I can't change course until I get to low Ganymede orbit. Let's just hope I don't get ganked by the alien fleets that are grouping up there. Ideally, I'd like to also jump Victor 11 because I'm ambitious like that before we link up at IO with HF-01 to see who else we can kill. So far, I reckon our intercept rate is running probably closer to 50, 50 or 60% as opposed to the 30% low-end estimate. Uh, we're doing about as well as the paper says that we could, which is awesome considering there's a whole bunch of reinforcements that are arriving in just a couple of weeks now. These additional battleships should make all the difference even once the heavy-hitting stuff wherever it is in this lineup, starts to arrive. The aliens were hoping, I think, that they could all group up at Ganymede at that station, become a death... I think, I'm pretty confident they wanted to all group up, become a death ball, and then clear us out of the Jovian system. But I just think this aggressive hunting strategy of picking up individual fleets on their way in is working really well, and I find it a vindication of this ship design. Uh, lots of DV... Not much side or rear armor because that gives you strategic mobility. The engine, I just, I just think this combination is working so far. People will design better ships. I've never played past 2035 before, so this is kind of my first time with late game ship design, and I've relied on people to tell me some good engines, which is the main thing that I was missing, understanding where good engines were in the tech tree.
but so far I'd say the concept is proving itself beautifully. As Battlefleet Jupiter is hours away from reaching Ganymede orbit and thus plotting its next interception, Task Force Anzac has reached uh, this alien base, the Fluttering Leaf base on 475 Oklo, and we have a 100% chance to assault with our Marines. So in they go, the assault will complete by 4th April. This might be our first destruction. I think it is going to be our first destruction of alien infrastructure since the war began many, many years ago at this point. The base as a whole is not going to be critically important. 1828 medals. This is an okay site. It'll put a small, small, small dent in the alien economy. But it will put a dent. My eyes are here on Earth, but in space, Battlefleet Jupiter, I believe, has about four hours to intercept. Uh, Victor 11 before it makes it to the alien station. Uh, it's three frigates and Battlefleet Jupiter is going in damaged, but that's better than letting three additional ships make it to the rally point. <sighs> the battle for Jupiter continues. And on schedule we have made the intercept, we will engage, we're going to have to bid most of our fuel tank in order to make the intercept at this point. 546, they bid everything, so they're trying for it. They've got point defense on all three vessels, which means the... Uh, which means the coil gun batteries are going to have a harder time of it, so this battle is going to be a little more prolonged than the others, but I'm still confident we can do it. We've got twice their combat value on paper, but a lot of that is the fact that we still have Delta V and they don't. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this initial formation, so what we will do is equalize out. Something like that. Drift into closer proximity, uh, but we should be facing... Oh, do you need to... Mm, I don't think any of them have lasers, so we should be okay. So let's engage. No priority target initially. I'm loving the tin droplet radiators. Uh, the low profile, not needing to retract them, also means I can probably not put heat sinks on coming vessels. Plus, the heat sink capacity is just so minor compared to everything we've got at this point. So we can priority target Celestial Wanderer because the engagement is taking place at quite close range. Hades is taking hits. I have no clue why PD is not engaging. Did one of them have plasma without me noticing? It is entirely possible one of them had plasma without me noticing. Turn the front armor on. Yep, we've definitely got plasma on the crescent moon. Does Hades still have it have its primary? Yeah, it looks like look, Hades still has. Hades has lost its point defense, but still has its primary battery. That is a failure of planning on my part. The failure to identify a plasma weapon meant that I turned signed on when I shouldn't. We'll engage the faithful wanderer next. I've let Hades fall behind quite deliberately. Scourge can finish off the last of the engagement. Probably with phaser hits before the mags even arrive. Yeah, phaser kill. All right, so that plasma caught us off guard. Hades took a little bit of damage. Its point defense capacity is offline, which means I hope that the shipyards around um, around IO are prepared for a rapid turnaround repair, not just a rapid turnaround refuel. That's going to be unfortunate if it costs us a couple of days. That said, most of the damage is just to the PD arrays. It's fairly localized. They should be able to put it together. 3.2 exotics, both ships count as damage. We will rally in seven hours until they're able to make the burn, but their uh, acceleration and KPS are intact. So We'll burn them back to IO Fortress and refuel. The tempo of operations cannot let off. Let's see how quickly the shipyards are able to repair the things. I would love to see a narrative or a series about this series of engagements. Um, Battlefleet Jupiter, Hades and Scourge have now been engaged in maximum tempo operations for a couple of weeks at this point, constantly burning, refueling. There is no room for downtime at this point. I dread to imagine how tired the crews are. They're probably hot bunking. And of course, the crews at IO Fortress well, they're busy as well, constructing defences, lashing those things together, and then turning these vessels around with incredible speed when they get back to base. That said, 
three more frigates destroyed, including a plasma boat, which I'm happy to have out of the way. You can actually see the damage on Hades as they slide back towards the repair facility. They'll make it to IO Fortress on 2nd April, turn them around. I think the next intercept window I wanted them to hit is 8 April for an incoming victor. Um, so let's hope the repair crews can make good on the damage to Hades. If they can't, I have to seriously give consideration to sending the force out Basically sending the force out damaged, attaching the new monitor and letting Hades go out without its point defences or a lot of its um, centerline armour replaced. I think tempo is more important than repairs if we have to make a hard choice between them. I've refueled the fuel tanks on Battlefleet Jupiter. They're asking for 4.5 days to turn around the damage. I'm going to give it to them even if it means... I'm not sure if it means I'm going to miss my next planned intercept, but I feel like I need to give them the repairs in 4.5 days isn't bad. Uh, we can link them up with the additional monitors in orbit to give them a little more PD coverage when they go out again, but at least the tanks are, are full and we'll have the confidence that Hades isn't exactly missing her mid uh, her midline armor having been ablated away by plasma if we give them the days to repair. I'd rather not lose the ship, frankly. All right, Counter-Strike complete. Looks like the Anzacs have landed and destroyed the surface base. Now, aliens will always self-destruct a surface base before they... Oh, shit, there is a... There is a battleship that has just arrived in 475 Oklo. Like, just arrived at 475 Oklo. Mag cannon, 384 centimeter orange laser array. Okay, so the primary... Big, they've got a big four-slot hull uh, orange laser battery here. The problem with that is PD, which is the only thing that our uh, marine transports have going for them, uh, won't do shit. Uh, it only has 275 dV though. It's a patrol vessel, fusion lantern, reasonable amount of forward armor, but not a huge amount. This is not a super heavily armed ship, but it's got a reasonable amount of firepower. Not super high tech, it's only a mag cannon, not an advanced mag cannon or anything like that. But I suffice to say that I think the Marines of Task Force Anzac, having done their job, landed their Marines and caused the base to self-destruct, because the base will always self-destruct rather than allow itself to be captured, captured. Um, TF Anzac should burn like hell all the way back to Space Adelaide. 5.25 weeks. I think that's the quickest... I think that's the quickest... Um, refuel point. I don't think I have any stations that are better positioned. So for the moment I'll take the... and they need to reload their uh, marines anyway. We'll look for alternative solutions but for the moment maximum speed burn right back to home. Base destroyed. Give them about 35 days to get home and let's hope that, that battleship doesn't decide to chase us. We've got the DV to run so let's run. We're running an interception rate above 50% at the moment. Battlefleet Jupiter is back online. Victor 21 is our next uh, target. It would arrive in orbit on the 22nd. We can intercept it. We can intercept it on the 16th or the 17th. I'm going to intercept it on the 17th for 136 dV. Should still be able to burn it out and make it home nice and safe. That'll pinch off two more Eternal Memory class frigates. These aren't the greatest, but again, the more trash that's in a fleet, the harder it is for your fleet to counter it, the harder it is to get through their PD. Because uh, these things... Oh! Oh, okay. Oh, shit, and I forgot to add... Actually, I don't feel too bad. I forgot to add the extra monitors to the fleet um, before it went out, the extra PD ships. Uh, but it looks like these are mounting plasma batteries and point defense and light mag cannons. The light mag cannons, no risk at all to the PD of our battleship, so I'm fine going without extra PD. The plasma battery, the monitors won't do anything. So I'm actually okay with the fact the fleet burned without its reinforcements. Hades, Scourge. Tally, Victor 21, engage. By the way, I think this event is confused by making the Alien Administration the primary rival of the United States of America in this event, because the Alien Administration doesn't exist, but um, it's looking for a rival, and clearly it's it's attached that, but I'm pretty sure I don't have an Alien Admin. Uh, in any case, I got the Anti-Satellite Test event for America, which normally lets you do a satellite test, Anti-Satellite Test, to generate a little bit of debris and no one likes you, but you get a little bit of miltech. Well, when you have surface to orbit defenses, you can do the extra option where you just light the sky up with uh, testing all of your surface to orbit lasers and interceptors and you just blast a whole bunch of targets in orbit. Uh, it's terrible for the low Earth orbit environment, but it just boosted America's miltech 
by 0.3, which has jumped us to 6.935. America's military technology of 7 is on the way. It's hurt our opinion in other countries, so we'll need to boost it back up. In particular, India needs some uh, opinion boosting and fortification, just and also some work on its unrest, but our councils have been so busy that it's hard to keep up. We're about to secure Ireland, hopefully. Looks like there is a Xenoform present as well, so Max's attentions will be required. He actually missed an assassination on, on a different one this turn, I believe. On Xenoform Alpha 25, I want to eliminate both of these if I can, because if I can get the last Hydra off planet Earth, well, there's no way for more to arrive. If I get all of the bases, and I kill the operatives that are here, and I shoot down anything arriving in the Earth system, that should be the last of the Hydra threat on the planet. So Max... Don't miss twice. And like the cavalry cresting the hill at Helm's Deep, HF-01 has completed its transfer to the Jovian system. A resupply will cost 364 water, made up of hydrogen primarily, but only take 0.4 days. And then, instead of having two battleships in operation in this system, we're going to increase our operational strength to seven of these battle cruisers, plus the monitors that we have been able to launch from our shipyards. That is a more substantial force, and even if the ships that have made it through to the Ganymede alien station decide to venture out, I reckon we can now take them in a fleet engagement. Now less than I think a quarter of the ships that were meant to arrive have either been intercepted or arrived, there's still a lot to come, but the force capable of intercepting them has increased dramatically. They have one more interceptor fight alone, but as far as I'm concerned, the men and women of Battlefleet Jupiter are heroes. They've held off the aliens for the better part, well, for several months at this point. And finally, reinforcements have arrived. Two ships defending our interests in this system. At least now they're going to have help. I think the first stage of the, the battle for the Jovian system is over. We've now got more serious capacities and capabilities in situ with which to engage the enemy. There are more victors incoming, some of these more formidable than all of the ones before them. But we've got the forces to meet them now. A couple of mul multiple interception fleets increases the odds that we'll be able to get ships before they manage to arrive and rally. Which means this is the place where I'm going to cut the episode. Next time, the second stage of the battle for the Jovian system begins, on a larger scale than ever before. See you then.